Good morning all. We will be studying the digestive system of Phineas. The digestive system of the prawn consists of an elementary canal and a very complex digestive gland. So this is the elementary canal and this is the gland seen here it's called the liver or uh, it's also called as hepatopancreas the elementary canal has three divisions the stomidium the mesodium and the proctodium the foregut or stomidium consists of mouth buccal cavity, esophagus and stomach. The mesodium or midgut or mesendron consists of the intestine. The hindgut or proctodium consists of the rectum and anus. Stomidium and proctodium develop as tubular ingrowths of the ectoderm and so they have an internal cuticular lining called as intima. While the mesodium has endodermal lining. So the midcut has endodermal lining. While the stomidium, proctidium, they develop as from the ectoderm. Hence they have a cuticular lining. That is the difference between the three. The buccal cavity and uh, before that there is the mouth the mouth is a longitudinal slit it is situated mid ventrally between the third and fourth cephalic segments you may be now familiar with what is a different cephalic segments cephalic means a head region they are uh, there are about five appendages and you know the first appendages antenue Second is antenna, third is mandible, fourth is first maxilla, fifth is second maxilla. So, the mouth is a longitudinal slit mid ventrally in the lowermost portion. If you see the, this is the ventral region. So, here you may see the uh, mouth will be guarded by the mandible and the first maxilla. It is guarded by, it is guarded in the front by a chitinous plate called labrum. So, there is a labrum. Okay. And it is guarded on the sides by by mandibles. So we are guarded on the sides by mandibles. It's guarded on the sides by mandibles. Front, it is guarded on the front by labrum. Guarded on sides by mandibles. And it is guarded behind by bilobed labium. It's labium. Uh, so, it is guarded in the front by labrum, on the sides by mandibles, it is guarded behind by bilobed labium and the two lobes of labium is called paragnathae 
or side jaws. So mouth, it is a longitudinal slit. It's situated midventrally between the third and the fourth cephalic segment. It is guarded by labrum. Okay. And in the front and on the sides by mandibles and um, behind by bilobe labium and the two lobes of labium is called paracnape or jaws side jaws next is the buccal cavity the buccal cavity that is mouth opens into the buccal cavity which is a short cumbrous chamber and it has a cuticular lining which is irregularly folded. It has a it is short cumbrous chamber with cuticular lining which is irregularly folded. It opens into the esophagus. Esophagus again has four fold. An anterior fold, a posterior fold and two lateral fold. So an anterior will be having This is the esophagus. It will be having an anterior fold, posterior fold and two lateral fold like this. Okay. So there will be the mouth, the compressed buccal cavity opening into the esophagus which will be having numerous folds inside okay Now, the esophagus opens into the stomach, which is very spacious. It fills the cephalothoracic region. It has two unequal divisions. That is, it has a cardiac, very larger cardiac region and a pyloric region. The cardiac stomach is large anterior part, which serves for the storage and grinding of food. Well, the pyloric is a small posterior part. It is uh, mainly concerned with sorting and straining the food. So, cardiac stomach is uh, food grind either. Uh, in the pyloric stomach, it is food in the different nutrients of strain either. It is sorting in the pyloric region. Lana. In the cardiac stomach, in the floor, there are folds in the fold. There are CT spicules in the Like this is the fold. There are CT in the spicules in the spiny folding. Minute needle like structures in lava. Okay. Now, uh, the these uh, dorsolaterally also, even on the dorsal, this is a floor, this is the dorsal side, uh, the lateral side also, the walls also will be having such uh, numerous tooth like denticles. But e floorilum, uh, teeth like denticles in the it will help in acting as an internal masticatory structure. That is the gastric mill act. Okay. So it acts as a gastric mill. It helps in grinding the food.
the pyloric stomach is produced into four fold again it is called as lappets or valvuli there is a dorso median one then ventro median and lateral molunum thaali side nokke illa fold galana pyloric stomach il illa fold gal these uh, folds extend backward to the mid cut and it incompletely divides the pyloric stomach into different compartments so it acts as a filtering apparatus formed of uh, chitinous plates and comb like bristles then extending from the pyloric stomach is the intestine which is the straight narrow tubular tube which runs along the entire length of the abdomen its endothelial lining has again numerous folds which reduces its lumen it leads into rectum rectum which opens out to the anus so it has the rectum which opens out to the anus which is guarded by the muscular sphincter muscles next is a digestive gland which is very important because there is only one digestive gland associated with this elementary canal it's called the hepatopancreas it's called the midgut gland or liver it is it su uh, surrounds the lateral ventral posterior part of the stomach it uh, if you can see the first figure it will be quite easy to remember look this is covering the posterior part of the stomach the lateral part and the ventral part so it develops from the embryonic midgut as pair of outgrowth called hepatic ck it has numerous branching tube uh, tubules which are uh, connected by the connective tissue and it's called the tunica propria and leading from each lobe of the hepatopancreas is the hepatopancreatic duct it opens to the hind part of the pyloric stomach so there are numerous compartments in the or branching tubules in pancreas and each uh, the compartment has a pancreatic duct all these uh, jo uh, open into the pyloric stomach it serves as a liver pancreas an intestinal gland it secretes proteolytic that is a digestion of proteins enzyme needed for the digestion of protein amylolytic needed for the digestion of carbohydrates lipolytic needed for the digestion of lipids or fats so it secretes all such enzymes it helps in storing glycogen fats and calcium and absorbs some digested food it serves as a center of intracellular digestion of some solid protein the prawns are omnivores that they can feed on both the uh, phytoplanktons and zooplanktons the food is collected with the help of chelipedes second maxilla helps to push the food into the mouth inside the mouth the food is cut into pieces by mandibles it is called mastication when it is pushed into the esophagus with the help of maxilla and maxillipedes from the esophagus it passes to the stomach by peristaltic movement and this is what happens so from the mouth it is pushed into the esophagus from the esophagus to the stomach and from the stomach it gets pul pulverized and digest uh, mixed with the digestive enzymes cardiac stomach in, in that stomach that it is and uh, the food undergoes internal mastication and churning during this the wall will contract and expand this brings the gastric mill into action crushing and grinding the food this is called as internal mastication it becomes uh, that is the food uh, the stomach wall's muscular activity brings about rolling and pressing of the food mass that is called churning it helps in thorough mixing of the food with the secretions of the hepatopancreas it's helpful for digestion the digestion is extracellular extracellular digestion and intracellular digestion occurs in the hepatopancreas after digestion uh, the food uh, the undigested food is eliminated through the anal opening and this passes out through the peristaltic